Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain why small covalent molecules have low melting and boiling points. You should then be able to explain why small covalent molecules cannot conduct electricity. In the last few videos, we've been exploring covalent bonding. We've seen a range of covalent molecules, which I'm showing you here. Now, all of the covalent molecules that we've looked at are small molecules. For example, methane only has five atoms. Now, there are two key properties of small covalent molecules. Firstly, small covalent molecules have low melting and boiling points. This means that small covalent molecules are usually gases or liquids at room temperature. I'm showing you here the melting and boiling points of some of the small covalent molecules that we've seen so far. As you can see, they all have very low melting and boiling points. All of the small covalent molecules that we've seen are gases at room temperature. That's because they all boil at temperatures below room temperature. Now, there is one exception to this, which is water. Water is a liquid at room temperature, but water still has a relatively low boiling point at 100 degrees Celsius. Now, in the exam, you could be asked to explain why small covalent molecules have low melting and boiling points. I'm showing you here a number of hydrogen molecules in their liquid form. Hydrogen is a liquid at very cold temperatures, for example, minus 257 degrees Celsius. Now, I'm using hydrogen to illustrate this point, but this equally applies to the other small covalent molecules. As you can see, the hydrogen molecules are vibrating. Now, I should point out that because I'm showing a liquid, these molecules would also be moving from place to place. However, I'm keeping it simple here by just showing the vibrations. Now, there are two key ideas that you need to understand. Firstly, the atoms in each molecule are held together by strong covalent bonds, and I'm showing that here. Secondly, there are very weak forces between one molecule and another molecule. Scientists call these intermolecular forces. Intermolecular means between molecules. And remember that intermolecular forces are very weak. Now, as we increase the temperature, the vibration of the molecules increases. At a certain point, this vibration is strong enough to break the weak intermolecular forces holding the molecules to each other. At this point, the molecules turn to a gas, in other words, boil. So, because the intermolecular forces are weak, it does not require very much energy to turn small covalent molecules from a liquid to a gas. In the exam, you could be shown a small covalent molecule and asked to explain why it has a low melting and boiling point. So, the key fact is that there are weak intermolecular forces between the molecules, and these intermolecular forces do not require a lot of energy to break. Another point you need to remember is that covalent bonds are not broken when a substance melts or boils. Now, there is one further point. As we increase the size of the covalent molecule, the intermolecular forces increase. We can see that with this table. This shows the first five alkanes. Alkanes are also small covalent molecules, and we're going to see alkanes in a lot more detail in later videos. We can see that as the alkane molecules get larger, their boiling point increases. That's because the intermolecular forces increase and require more energy to break. OK, so we've seen that small covalent molecules have low melting and boiling points. Let's take a look now at another key property of small covalent molecules. Small covalent molecules do not conduct electricity. That's because small covalent molecules do not have an overall electric charge. Again, this is a relatively common exam question, so it's really worth learning. You'll find plenty of questions on this topic in my vision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above.